It doesn't go straight to the board. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't aware of it. That's James O's house. Yeah, I was. Okay, but you're going to do it. Yeah, Oh, yeah, I got a nice for you. It is cool. Very cool. Good afternoon. How are you? The house next to the property is 16,000. Hot tub that's falling apart. And they don't use it. They've never used it. All their stuff around. It's good. And they're complaints. We have a complaint every day. Oh, all complaints, really. I know. Yes, you want me to grab you something? Well, just the main parts. Oh, 
Discussing these things in front of you guys. There will be a time for you to interject. Right now, that's not going to be your time. So, if you guys would just, uh, you know, allow us to be able to discuss these topics and then you guys can chime in uh, when it's the appropriate time. Okay. Um, otherwise, we'll never get anything done. Is there an agenda back there? Yes, yes, there are agendas. Thank you. And, uh, uh, oh, they're, they're just Stanley's here, but um, Aldrin, she's not in yet. Yeah. It might be most important to for people on Facebook. Okay. We'll give everybody a chance to get their agendas and then we can go ahead and discuss. Uh, some of these issues. Uh, one thing while everybody's here, uh, I want to thank the uh, uh, majority of folks for getting their palm trees trimmed. We still have about 10% of the community that has not complied. Um, basically, uh, you know, it works out to almost $20,000 of funds. We really don't want to collect that money. We'd love to have people get their palm trees trimmed, but we will uh, be having a hearing uh, on the 30th for those that just don't want to seem to follow the rules. So um, I don't think anybody in here is going to be going to that. But, uh, you know, it, it is it is a problem when we do need to get those things trimmed. So uh, anyways, uh, as far as the meeting goes, uh, initially we're going to be discussing some of the, some of the things that were uh, ACC issues that were brought up by the ACC committee. Um, we do have, uh, uh, one of the one of the things that, that was left out um, that Paul Paul Daly, uh, Don Gray, and myself missed on the on the last CCNR change was about the gates. We do not allow wood fencing, and we also do not allow wood gates. Um, they're supposed to be ornamental iron. So that was something that was left off of the 
uh, prior uh, CCNRs. Uh, another change was uh, that had to do with um, uh, the fact that we constantly are having to get variances for uh, our front courtyards. There's already 300 homes that have courtyards that have complied with five foot or, or, or less in, in block wall uh, uh, for courtyards. And um, so long as they're within the proper setbacks, um, which they have to go ahead and submit on their plan. I would like to be able to have that change. And I know that uh, the ACC would too, so we don't have to keep getting variances. It just extends the process two months. And for somebody that wants to get their project done, that, that could be a little aggravating. So uh, that's another thing that we were looking at. Um, and, uh, and, and there were a couple other issues um, that we have, one of them being uh, with the new, uh, and this was brought up by Sam Lancaster, with the new uh, uh, vehicles that we have, especially pickup trucks, our payloads and things are different than what they were back in the past. Uh, so what what this does is this allows people to be able to, to have an F-250 truck or an F-150 in some cases. Uh, uh, you know, we're not looking for double axle kind of things. We're just looking at regular trucks that have uh, payloads uh, that now are much higher, you wouldn't be able to park an F one hundred and fifty truck in the park in the driveway. Um, what this does is this allows for uh, those people to be able to park their vehicles there, um, and that does not allow for a chassis cab, which is a huge F four hundred and fifty cab that's generally intended for uh, pulling large trailers and things like that with major amounts of, of weight. Um, that would be considered a temporary parking. Um, and so that would be uh, something that would fall under uh, category 6.8.10 for temporary parking. Uh, the last change of that particular, uh, of CCNRs, now this would be another change uh, that we are proposing would be a change of of age to allow kids uh, that are still living with their parents and going to college uh, up to 21 instead of 18. There's quite a few kids that are going to high school that are still, you know, 18, um, <laughs> some even 19, you know, that started late. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it kind of restricts those kids from, from playing golf. And uh, we all, you know, we, we we kind of look at that. So um, we, uh, I'm going to open this up to discussion with the board. Um, let's start at the beginning with uh, as far as the ornamental iron. Um, is there any discussion that you guys would like to have on that? Uh, yeah. So our previous CCNR said that we could have wood. So I'm assuming that we have hundreds of homes that have wooden gates. No. We don't? We don't. Uh, so we have a few. Okay. So are those people going to have to change those, or those no? Be, okay. No. Um, and one of the problems that you ran into is, just like anything else with wood, when you say it's wood, there are some people that have spent two or three thousand dollars, absolutely beautiful gates that have wood in them, and these are uh, these are, I mean, unbelievable. And then there's people that spend seventy five bucks. And it looks like it's going to fall apart in that week. So, you know, there is no way of distinguishing between the two. Um, you know, it's not like you can specify in detail. Yeah, you got to spend four grand on a gate. You know, so that's where the problem lies. And it was just, I think it's more or less holding up in our in our environment. We have a really, really uh, arid climate out here, and it beats wood up like crazy. And we can see that just in the fascia boards of our houses. Uh, so, anyways, uh, anybody else have any? Questions? I have some high end wood gates at my Pasadena house. Wood, and they're very, very nice. And they hold up very well. Pasadena's mm -hmm. not the desert, but it's mm -hmm. the RF by the sun. Would that be allowed by a variance? That'd be something 
consideration. I mean, we can always consider a variance. I mean, there's always that option. We're not we're not totally a hundred percent saying, you know, it's just if you're gonna put in something that's of high quality that's gonna hold up, um, there's also uh, there's also composites like a Trex. The Trex decking, you know, it looks like wood, but it sure is not wood. It's um, you know, it's a composite product. So we're we're looking at something that's going to have consistency and longevity, and um, you know, as far as maintenance is concerned, you know, the problem is you as this owner may take great care of that. The next owner may never ever do anything to it. Because where I see that is is when one of the, we're we're talking about the walls that come out like kind of even with the garage and kind of wall in your front area. Um, that's where I see putting in kind of a, a, a wood like, like almost a residential door when mm -hmm. it's outside. That that's kind of the look I prefer because mm -hmm. you're, you know, an iron gate is see through and stuff. I guess you can put a backing mm -hmm. on it. Um, you know, I, so I, I mean, I can see that being a common mm -hmm. quest mm -hmm. in combination with allowing that wall to come. Right. Well, Meredith's across the way have a beautiful front gate on there. Um, but there again, like I said, that was put in way, way before this. Um, so, anyways, um, those are some of the, you know, the options there. Is uh, is there anybody else that feels that we should just leave it as wood or? No, I, I agree. I, <clears throat> if it's a if it's a well done, and there there, there could be a variance there. Uh, if it's a well done door like arched structure type of thing that that goes with the goes with the uh goes with the house a spanish type of, of deal then i think that's that's fine uh i would like to see though mostly wrought iron i mm -hmm. think it goes better with our community mm -hmm. I was told, and I'm not trying to verify it. I was told the city of Desert Hot Springs has a board that's good. Oh. I don't know. I know we know we aren't in there. I'm just saying it's know. not something historic for us. It's a comedy desert. Yeah, I just know that the wood, the wood just holding up out here is just, especially with the winds and everything. Well, I, I agree. If it's a beautiful you know, wooden gate, yeah. but wooden gates go. And look pretty happy pretty quick some of them because like jim said some of the owners i mean you may be a really good owner and take care of that and i really don't want to see plastic looking wood if, i mean i understand what you're saying you're what you're talking about is a is um not a, a material that's not exactly plastic but but in order for us to be able to say okay this is this is the only kind of material you need you can have otherwise we might end up with plastic looking wood fences that tend to look really tacky at times. I mean, some of them can be very expensive, but some of them are just, you know, you can buy them online for X enough. That's my only concern. Trying to keep everything kind of in the same. <laughs> All right, and uh, Dave Stanley, I think he's on, is he on? Yeah. Yeah, he's in. Does he want to make any kind of a Comment or yeah, sorry, I uh, I was unmuted, but I I tr usually I mute between comments, and I guess I will not be able to do that today. Um, you know, I don't have a strong opinion on that. I I really look forward to hearing what the uh, what the members think today. I know one thing: uh, it it becomes a little bit arbitrary after a while if we start. Um, deviating from from what we've used in our covenants uh so i i guess i would just uh err on the side of caution but i would agree some of these two thousand dollar gates that i've seen that looked like they came out of a castle somewhere gorgeous but i i don't know it's it's going to be hard to regulate so i I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what the audience thinks today <coughs> okay so um, I guess we can go ahead and open that up to discussion for that, for the audience, yes? Okay. Um, the house on Pinehurst, 
Um, since you're saying wrought iron, that house on Pinehurst that has the glazed glass. Yes. Right? So you're eliminating that also, that option, because you're saying just wrought iron only. Well, so yeah. I, I think you need to be really clear about what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Um, so I using just saying wrought iron is okay is not okay with me when we have this house that mm -hmm. we did on Pinehurst. And that gate is something I would like to do because it's not wood, but it's- No, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous, but you're eliminating it here. Yeah, maybe the way we should reword that is, is that a, a non- um, How about an impervious, uh, built out of an impervious product that wouldn't be um, uh, disturbed by the weather that's something true. in that in that uh, respect um, so that might that might help so glass would be falling into that category Rick? okay you don't have to overthink this you put in you rewrite it to specifically eliminate some things like um, <clears throat> uh, wood plank uh, uh, chicken wire fence you know right the things that we know we do not want Mm -hmm. All others will, you know, all other options will be considered, you know, by a variance. You know, let somebody come up. Here's what I got. This is the materials I'm going to use. <clears throat> the pressurized wood, um, the, the, the Trex kind of stuff, the, the ornamental, uh, you know, gate and, you know, a combination. But every one of those has to be requests. But just like when we submit plans for a new house, it's got to mm -hmm. be reviewed before it's authorized. That's not a bad idea. We can actually yeah. have a uh... Have a gate review versus um, uh, we, you know, obviously there are things that we just absolutely do not want in here. <laughs> we don't want to downgrade the uh, community. So, um, oh, yeah, that's actually a very good idea. It allows people to come up with uh, different uh, options, some maybe that we haven't even thought of. So, yeah, I, I, what do you guys think of that? That sounds like a yeah, that's not probably a cat, uh, that would, no chicken wire, no chain. Well, well, we already have that on there. Uh, and what we can do is change it to um, uh, read. I think uh, what we, I think that's a little wide open. I, I'm not sure that's a great idea myself. I think if we took some time, we worked with the ACC committee, and we identified four, five, six different options, similar to what we do uh, on the rest of what we require for our covenants and conditions. Um, we could come up with five, six different options, three, four, whatever it, whatever it is. And, and then the ACC committee would, uh, would have purview over that. And if there was a, if that was challenged by the, the member, then maybe the board would need to take it up at that point in time, but maybe we should consider looking at options and have them detailed. Dave, can I, to that point, what, if some new material comes forward, if some new design comes forward, now we've got to change the CCMRs again to include it. If we just say what's excluded, then anything else can be considered. Doesn't mean it's going to be approved. With a variant. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. I like the variant. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, we know we're not going to be including plastic. <clears throat> yeah. Vinyl. And, uh, and vinyl or chain link. So those items definitely. Yeah, normally, and, uh, I would agree with, with what you're saying, Dave. You know, I, I don't like setting ourselves up for a variance being required in, in, in so many cases. I just think this one kind of begs for it because it really is a qualitative decision on, on the quality of design of mm -hmm. what we gave you know, offer. Okay, okay, so what we'll do is we'll we'll uh, table this one and, and we'll we'll rewrite that and then put it out to to the uh, members for vote. But we're taking into consideration what was said here, so uh, that way when hey. we do that, we can look to, to hey, try Jim. to. Yeah, if I could address the members and anybody uh, streaming this today, I don't know if it's really been covered yet, but. Kind of the we we've called this a town hall, but we're going to be talking about several topics today, uh, the players' cards and some of these other ones. And we've found as a board that we really don't have the ability 
to meet as a group uh, as per our bylaws to brainstorm on some of these things, <clears throat> in our opinion, without this being an open meeting. And that's why we've attempted to do this today because we, you know, we want to, you know, try and abide by what, what our bylaws direct us to do. You know, we're very limited on the executive meetings. Um, so that's kind of the idea of why we're here today uh, in an open session. And, and I assume we're probably going to see more of these. And then the other thing, I'm probably going to need to cut out early myself. We started uh, harvesting wheat today on the farm. And uh, I just uh, jumped out <coughs> of the to run in here. So I'll probably won't be able to stay for the whole meeting. But but thanks for everybody for coming, for sure. So OK, getting on to the next item. Um, uh, that would be the one where we're discussing the courtyard. Um, and and so what we're trying to do is alleviate the fact of taking it to a, a, a variance every single time somebody wants to build one of these. We still have to fit within the parameters of what the ACC uh, guidelines are. So we have to fit within the setbacks, both side and front. Uh, we also have to uh, fit within the overall heights and what the product is that we're using to build these uh, uh, courtyard fences with. So um, on that, uh, do any of the board members have any anything they want to chime in on that uh, as far as for discussion? <laughs> Does anybody have a... No, I'm good on this one. As long, okay. as, as long as it doesn't affect the people that have already got what they have. I mean, oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, what, we're, what we're doing is we're just allowing uh, uh, folks to come from this point on. Um, and, yeah, and uh, and basically uh, uh, the ones that already have it, they Our went through the proper channels. Well, they already went through the proper channels. Now, you know, I would assume they already got their hearing and did it the correct way. Um, so when, when Jim explained this issue to me, I went in growth and beauty and looked for what he was talking about. And I was shocked that how commonplace this is. This is mm -hmm. something like, you know, 30% of our single family <laughs> homes have something like this. So why would we require a variance on something that is not the majority, but but such a high prevalence? I just, it, that's just silly. That's just and, added red tape. And I think they look good. I like it. I actually was looking at it going, you know, I could do something like that in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, Really, this has blocked the sun from my hottest window. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to open that up to uh, members. If, uh, anybody have any any complaints with that? Yes, Tom. I don't have any complaint. I just want a little clarity. I've thought of a front courtyard mm -hmm. for several years, but due to the fact being a sewer uh, uh, septic system, mm -hmm. I'm kind of waiting for the city or somebody to hook up to the sewer. <laughs> so the old set of standards as I understood them to be was that if you had a garage that protruded out in front of your house five feet, uh, you could only bring the courtyard out even with that garage, but yet that garage is farther back than than 20 feet. Yeah, it's 20 yeah. feet is a setback. So my question is this, uh, so now we can put a courtyard in, mm -hmm. 20 feet from the front of the seat, from the street, mm -hmm. and it can be five feet high. Correct. Okay. And uh, yeah. most yards kind of slope down. So is that five feet measured from a the point where the 20 feet is in front of your house? Because most houses are about a foot and a half no. higher. It's than measured the street. from the grade. So, so do I get that foot and a half higher? To use with my five foot. It's off uh, the grade of where your house is. Yeah. So you measure where your house is. Right. Your actual residence is at a grade. So that would be where you measure it off of, and then you go five feet from there. So I was just asking for clarity and mm -hmm. gave you. you got it. No problem. Uh, everybody likes that one then? Because well, probably, no, I, you just you just confused me on that, Jim. I'll tell you that right now. So, <laughs> It sounded like if if my house sits uh, two feet higher than than what the grade would be twenty feet from the road, I might have a seven foot high courtyard wall. I mean, 
No, you're, you're not. Five you're, feet you're, you're, it's going to be five feet because, Dave, it goes off the grade of the house. So you're not going off the grade of the, of the road. Otherwise, you could have, I mean, Phil Anderson would have no wall. He no, could have yeah. to go off the, the street is. If you're on a hill, you, you, you would, I mean, that wouldn't make sense. So you go off the, the, the grade of the house, that's going to set grade for your, for your wall. So I, exactly my question. So that means if my house is sitting high and I'm going out towards the road, let's say for argument's sake, I leave my house, I go 20 more feet out toward the road and mm -hmm. I'm allowed to be five feet at my house. But when I get within 20 feet of the road, I could be seven feet tall. So I, am right. I- yeah, yeah, that's cor that's Correct. Right. And the reason being, Dave, is because it's measured off of, Typically, when you put a courtyard in, it's going to be at the grade of where your entryway. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I would be opposed to this then because I think it would need to be stepped down. I don't like the idea of uh, 20 feet from the road just because somebody's house is high. They might have a seven or eight foot block wall 20 feet from the road uh, based on I think I think we're approaching it wrong if it's based on the grade of the house. I think that retaining wall or the courtyard probably needs to be stepped down. Just to, so because we've, we've, never, we've never done it in the past and the variances have been granted based on the fact that people have it based off their grade of their property. It would be real weird because if, yeah. if you think about it, um, it wouldn't protrude typically past your, your garage. Most garages, they make them out as far as they possibly can. Because we're we have small lots. In Tom Spence's case, they didn't, but and nor did they on mine. But but a lot of them do. Some of them are even really close. So um, if if you're looking at it, it's going to be at the same elevation of what your what your house is built on. Well, I'll tell you. Anybody want to drive by my backyard, and if you look and see what I would have, I would have had a twenty foot block wall. If I would have done the same thing on the back of my house, I had to stagger my block wall down uh, in order to be in compliance with the height issue back by the golf course. And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to split hairs here, but I, I think it, we need to think about this one a little bit. Well, how's the front door? It's a front door. How do we feel about that, guys? I'm, I'm fine. With okay. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, yeah. they, okay. they consider a, a five foot wall with two foot foot, basically. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The back of both of our houses, they dove off because of the golf course. Not our, our streets are, are, are level. So, oh, 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 you, know, oh. you know what I'm you know, saying? I can just be quiet, but I'm telling you, I can. You, let's go down on, on Pinehurst and you can see. I can name how many people's houses drop off 15 feet from their house down to the street. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's going to be up to the membership because they're going to vote on this. Not it's not our decision. So yeah, and keep in mind we're not putting the, the these are not set on the street, so we understand where we're talking. They're set 20 feet back from the street. Well, is that okay. kind of like right? Yeah. Because I can see uh, when I stand, my wall comes to here from the patio mm -hmm. when I look out. Mm -hmm. But if I go around the other side where it's sloping down, mm -hmm. right. it's yeah. over my head. Right. But it's still the same size. Well, mm -hmm. You're allowed to have five feet level yeah. from your grade. So right. you're, yeah. I mean, nobody's that's gonna put in a courtyard that's gonna slope yeah. down. Right. No. You're gonna level your grade. Right. Your, your backyard is a different story yeah. because right. you're gonna put the wall out and you have the right to level your backyard. Right. We, we had to do that on a couple of houses on Pinehurst right. where people went, wow, that's an eight foot high wall. Yeah, well, because the guy wants to have a level backyard right. so he can use his backyard. Yeah, um, and, the, and Debbie McGowan did the same. Uh, so did um, yeah. the other gal next year. So, um, you know, there's just some, some things are a little more radical than others as far as Eddie, Eddie, can you hear me? Jim? Yes. yes. Can you hear me, this Eddie? Yes, Eddie, I can. Uh, hi, thank you. I just figured out that I was muted, so I can understand that. But, you know, I got to agree with Dave because um, on the grade of our house, 
you know, it slopes up. And if I'm looking at the grade the home is at versus street level, you know, like, like Dave said, we're up a couple of feet. So I got to better understand how you're measuring grade here. It's off the height of the elevation of the home. Like your neighbor, your neighbor next door has a courtyard. Okay. If you're standing on the street, yes, it is eight feet above your head. Yeah. Because you're standing out on the street, but we don't measure off the street. Yeah. We measure off of where your your grade is okay. on, off of your home. You have right. to have a constant. If we don't have a constant, then everybody's going to be having these crazy fences. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. Come yeah. Now. yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Well, uh, my, we're, my we're, only comment back to Dave and, and to, to Eddie is when we put our courtyard in the front on uh, where the grade was, was five feet, six inches. So we had to get a variance at that time. And this is 15, 14 years ago to do that. Um, but again, from down the street, you know, it does look like it's higher, mm -hmm. you know, but that's just the illusion where it comes out past the garage. That's where it's flat. Correct. So, yes, people need to be able to do what they need to do in order to make it aesthetically pleasing. Right? Mm -hmm. you put in a yeah. courtyard with a wall with like wall. this, I know what the point is to create privacy. Um, and another place to sit without the neighbors going high, 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 you know, right. and that dog jumping over. So, yeah. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm in agreement with this. So yeah, and, and like I said, 99% of the homes, the building pad that they're built on, that doesn't have like an elevated or drop down garage or anything like that, they're generally all on a flat level plane. And that's what we're talking about is generally the setback is right at or a little behind is where people will build those courtyard fences, but they'll be flush with the garage. So the garage is on the same grade as what the what the home well, is and generally the property. Well, in, in theory, it, it may, I think we're oversimplifying this. We really are um, because you, you go to the Senator's house on, on Pinehurst and his driveway slopes so fast that if he was allowed to go five feet at his garage or at his house and keep that same constant elevation to within mm -hmm. 20 feet of the road, that thing would be 12 feet tall. And no, I it, would it, would it would not. It would not. It's 20 feet from the curb to your house. Yes. Yeah. I think that are backwards. Yeah, yeah, we're not building on the street. Um, right. <laughs> It's not 20 feet out towards the street. It's 20 feet from the street to your right. That fact is not lost on me if, if, okay. if you're trying to educate me with that. And I stand by what I said. You go down Pinehurst and you will have a 12 foot tall block wall. And all of a sudden we're going to be saying, wow, we didn't see that one coming. So, you know, whatever the, the, the members will vote on it. But I think we need to do a little bit more. Uh, investigation. No, I, we see I think the board. Okay. Okay. Wait, there's another member she wants to speak. Oh, we have another. Yeah. Hi, Jim. It's Sandra Rodriguez. Uh, yes. Um, I don't have this kind of a courtyard system, but if are we overcomplicating? Are we just talking about a five foot high wall of building material and wherever it is, it is on your grade? Yes. Yeah. Well, I have to no. Um, Sandra, it has to fit within the setback. Right. So your setback would be 20 feet from the, it's, it's right. 20 feet from the street. Right. And we're, we're going off of grade of the house. Okay. Right. So grade of the house is going to be, you know, unless, unless you have some kind of really raised or really dropped down thing you got to step up to. Um, that would be something that would be kind of different, but well, typically it, off the grade is what we're looking at. Someone mentioned a few oh. minutes ago that 14 years ago they had to get a variance because it was five foot six. Are we talking about five feet of actual building and however it looks from wherever it looks? Oh. It's five feet talking grade. about it? And, and what we're trying to do is eliminate the need for a variance. Is well, all exactly. 
So we're talking a five foot tall wall. I, yeah. I, I had to have a variance because of, there was some under. Oh, I mean, yeah. is this solved by the limitations that county ordinances are going to put on us? I, mean, I don't think the no. county will. No, 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 no. This is uh, covered. Uh, so we're talking about foot. We're arguing you know, foot. No. Jim, mm -hmm. I think we should have hammered this thing out as a board before we open it up. No. 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 We were going to do that. We said we do this in open session, which is what we're doing. What what you told me was. That we were going to open it up. Okay. I, I thought we were going to open it up to public comment at the end of the meeting, but if we want to do it on a case by case basis, let's at least have the board members finish where they're going with this. And, and I, I, we actually did, Dave. We, okay. we all, everyone here is, is wanting to make the change. Uh, can, I, can I say something? Yeah. And then we, have you been by our house on Doral? Our house sits on a hill like this. We have a courtyard that goes around. When I stand in my courtyard and I look out, I can lean on the wall. It's really great. But when I go out to get my mail, I have a gate. When I go out to get my mail, the wall is up here. But that's because my house is up here. So if if you can't have it smaller, I, it would look ridiculous. Yeah, it would look ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Just go by and just go Jim. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then I can support. Yeah. As a as a masonry guy. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to be able to do this. You go to the county. They're going to give you a permit for a five foot wall or six foot wall. Yeah. Yeah. That's as high as you can go. Correct. Okay. It'll slow. The great 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 your house is zero when you're shooting it with a trench, that's mm -hmm. zero. Yep. So you go from there and you go five feet. And the county will not let you build it seven feet, eight no. feet high. Yeah. They're, they're gonna make you keep right there with the code is. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do. Exactly. Well, I, I agree with Ken on that. I would what I could support uh Jim is I think we need to keep a variance uh, on the table. And I think if if you're a lot that slopes toward the road, and it appears that that block wall is going to be really high, then you would need to get a variance at that point in time. But I, I think that we're probably only. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. Okay, I Ron. I see the point that he's making here because if you have a house and it's on a high grade, theoretically you take a you know, a really large outside wall if you want that outside by the street, level with the street. You can't. Okay. You can't. And, and go back 20 feet. You can't. That might be very hot. So in those instances where you have a certain degree of slope, you could put in, if you're still to have a slope of more than this, you need to have something that's going to be aesthetically pleasing from the street. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem like this, whether it's the front of your house, or the back of the house that's going to work. Yeah. If you there. take a look at Meredith's house, right? You can walk right out here and look. It's right here. They have a courtyard. Okay. They have a slope. Do they have a slope? They have a like huge slope. The up to the, up yes. To the yes. Of the yes. 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 Huge slope. Yes. Am so I right, Tom? Right. Tom so parks there all the time. Yes. Probably parked there today. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tom Stocker? But it's a they, slope. You parked there today at Meredith's, right? They have, slope. they have a slope on their driveway, correct? Yeah. yeah. It's probably a good four feet. Yeah, you know what? I'm, as long as it's five feet on one side, on the house side. Five. Exactly. exactly. And all we're looking to do is just eliminate the need for the variance. That's it. If they're going to build it five feet, then we don't need a variance. That's all we're saying. If they're going to build it 10 feet, then they're going to need a variance. Right. Then it won't get passed. And we'll get it. Tell you won't let you do it. Jim. There you go. One more time. Jim. I... Jim. Connie. 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 Okay. My thought is do we want to allow the compound look in a book? It's what the compound look on. We already have it now. Yeah, have you yeah, driven through our complex? Yeah. We have over 300 homes that have that already. I have. Are we going to 
I'd like to hear yeah, from people Tony. People want to do it, then why not? Yeah. We can't change it now. I mean, how are you going to tell somebody that moves in here when there's 300 homes already allowed? I'm sorry, you can't do that. It's not going to work. No. Um, Connie and is that Connie and Jack? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Jim, can can you hear me? Yes. I can. It, it seems to me some people have the impression you're going to have a 12 foot possibility of a 12 foot high block wall. That is not the case. No. The wall itself would only be five feet. Correct. However, the top of the wall could be 12 feet from the road, but that's totally different than a 12 foot high block wall that somebody mentioned earlier. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that Jim. would be like saying that your house is well, all of our houses could be no higher than 18 feet. But if you live on a hill, you can only build your house 10 feet high because Jim. you'll be over 18 right. feet. Right. So, and that's we not must really be really well, Okay, can we move on to the next? Yes. Okay, um, the next one would be about the um, the trucks. And uh, that has to do with um, uh, the uh, payload capacity of, of trucks. Uh, what we're looking to do is, um, in fact, uh, Sam can probably speak on that better than I can. Basically, what we're, what we're doing, there's, the, the payload capacity of, of vehicles today, pickup trucks today, have changed dramatically. Uh, a Ford F-150, for instance, looking at this variance, you can't park them anywhere, okay? What we're doing is changing that. You can park your pickup, an F-150, F-250, if you have a pickup, but no cabin chassis. And a cabin chassis is basically a truck. Take a truck that doesn't have any bed on it. Okay, you can make that a cabin chassis you could make that into a dump truck. So a cabin chassis, no, we don't want in here. Those are basically trucks that <clears throat> that contractors would use. Uh, uh, you know, like a dump truck or, or state bed. yeah, state bed, that type of thing. Commercial Those vehicles. are cabin chassis commercial vehicles. But an, an average pickup truck today, the payloads are, are much bigger and it's not going to harm. I mean, an F-150, looking at what we have written here today in this, you wouldn't be able to park it on the streets. You wouldn't be able to park it in, on your driveway. So we're just changing it to say, hey, if you got a pickup truck, you can park it. Yeah, that's it. And we eliminated the the, the chassis cabs. Yeah, and, no chassis cabs. And uh, yeah, those those can be here temporarily, or you know, say you have a contractor that's using a dump truck. Yeah, you can use it for the day, but then once that time is up, he can't he can't uh, leave it there. He can't leave it there. And that one needs to be eliminated. Um, how do we feel about that, guys? No, I'm fine with this. Yeah. Please. Yeah. We okay? No brainer. Everybody, Dave, we good with that? Oh, hey, Dave, you're going to with that. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about any any members? Does any member have a comment on that at all? We can, talk, we can talk about cabin chassis, state bed, dump truck, you know, delivery vans, that kind of thing. If you want to make sure, try to make it very clear as to you know what cannot be parked on the street. Yeah, and that's um, and that's the yeah the chassis cab actually pretty much I think so covers that covers that. Yeah. The question is not everybody understands what that is. Well, they'll find out real quick. <laughs> No, I, I no, I understand what you're saying, Rick. And, and, you know, we could just say no chassis cabs, i.e., steak beds, dump trucks, etc. I I understand where you're coming. From. No, no, with, with, with a back, with a back box, not a you know a toolbox. Oh, toolbox. Yeah. No, 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 not a toolbox. Going to normally take off the pickup bed, put on. Okay. 
Oh, a utility truck. Yeah, that's a cabin chassis. That's a cabin chassis. Yeah, cabin chassis. Yeah. 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 Um, what about the truck that's parked on Clubhouse right now that's working on that house? Right down where you cross on number eight? Well, he's, he's working on one of them. Right, but, well, I know he left it overnight. I'm just saying. You mean, oh, you mean the tractor, the petty boat? Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Oh, oh like that's that. a rental piece of equipment. And he's yeah. got it. And that's, yeah, that's, that's in the middle of a construction. Right, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just if you live something. there, you can't have it sitting there. Well, what the, the intent of the rule is, is that we don't want to have, let's just say, uh, let's just say I start parking, uh, if I buy a, a dump truck, and I start bringing that home and parking it in my driveway. No, that's a no. That is a no, okay. and that's not it's, right. It's, it's a temporary it, thing. Like it's done and, temporary and, and that's what they, it would fall under what they call temporary parking. Right. So you can get a permit, a parking permit for that. Um, but that's not even a, uh, that doesn't even have a, a license for it. It's not registered. It's, it's a petty bonus for, you know, moving that's all kinds of, you know, trusses and you know, all stuff like that around. Okay, so we're all good on that one. We don't need to really do much more on that. It could. Um, next one would be uh, the uh, the change of 18-year-old um, club members uh, to allow them to be 21, assuming that we have more uh, families coming in here. Uh, our demographics are changing. We have people are going to be coming in here of all, all different ages. I see a lot of little kids in here, uh, a lot of teens as well. Um, so, you know, the thought there is if you're going to school, um, and, uh, uh, you're going to college and, uh, you know, you still are here and you want to, you know, you live with mom and dad, want to play golf. Um, I don't know that that would be too much of a hardship on the club to allow them to do that. Um, uh, what do you guys think here? I'm always, I'm going to make it 21 and under or under 21. 21 and under. Because our current is effectively 17. 18. No, no. My son was cut off on his 18th birthday. So it was 18 years of age or under. It was yeah, defined as under 18. Yeah. Well, the way it is, it's great. It's 18 years of age. Well, that's not the way it should be. It should be. You, you could have gone back. Is that is safe yeah. right there? Yeah. The problem is, is we're inconsistent across our bylaws, CCNRs, and rules and regulations. They all say something slightly different. Yeah. Wow. Well, we need what to make sure that they stay the same. I never we spent that. all that money to get an attorney to straighten that out. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let's, let's discuss the um, 18 year thing. So, uh, board members, do we have any issue with uh, 21 and under? Uh, no question. Question on how that's. No. Question no. on how that's. I got one other question for the. Oh, can you turn up Dave's line? Yeah. Say something. Uh, a question on how that's defined. I really like the spirit of the idea of moving it to twenty-one for sure. Um, there is there still just two golfers in the house. So if my wife and myself decided to have another child at our. <laughs> 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 and uh, would that child be a golfer too? Uh, yes, to yes, on? we are rules are. Okay. You know, I'm good. Uh, here's, with that here's one thing I'd like to discuss um, with the board uh, so, and, and see if we can throw it out. Just I, I, a lot of us are grandparents, right? And we have grandkids, and they're not living here with us. They come and visit once in a while. Would that be something that we might want to consider uh, to allow? Uh, a grandchild to play. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh, if they yes, still the board. Yes, yes. Is this still the board talking, Jim? Yes. It's a board talking actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, but, in my um, case, growing up here, um, I I had privileges to till twenty four because that was the old rule back in the dark ages, and. It was my grandparents, not my parents, but my grandparents were, they claimed me as the dependent. I was their dependent. So we made the tax change partially so I could get benefits. I mean, there was a reason for it. But I lived more than half the time with my parents. So are you done, Steve? I'm having trouble today. Anyway, um, 
I obviously have a dog in the fight, being a snowbird and having grandkids. I, I'm just worried about the effect on uh, Mission Lakes Country Club's budget if I don't pay for my grandkids in the future because I'm going broke paying for these kids. I mean, I, I'm not kidding you. I pay a couple, I wouldn't be surprised if I pay a couple thousand a year in guest fees. And this year, you know, my grandkids come down when they're 16 years old. It's a rite of passage. They travel by themselves. It's a, most of them golf, they all golf. And it's kind of a, a, a golfing trip among other things. But you know, that week is, is an expensive week. These same kids are playing school golf, okay? And if they lived in Desert Hot Springs, they probably have access to my golf course and they don't even have any ownership there. And I'm okay with that. I, I am okay with the DHS kids that are playing school ball coming out. As a matter of fact, I totally support that. Yeah. But I, you know, I think Jim, your, your question is, is valid. Um, when these kids travel down to, to uh, grandma and grandpa's and it's not just snowbirds. I mean, the permanent residents have <laughs> grandkids coming down as well. And uh, so I, I like that question. And I, I guess I would personally be in favor of that myself. Yeah, the only reason I was asking. How do you regulate it? Well, that's, you know, and you know, it, is, it is an issue there. I just brought it up as an option, but. Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that's something we need to look, look at very closely. And the reason I say that is, number one, how do you regulate it? Uh, you know, I, I don't I know. I, my journey's out. Yeah. No, it, was just, it was just something I brought up. Yeah. 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 I do have one question. It's not understood. You know, great job. But as far as your your That's original right. thing, I'm in favor of moving it to 20. You have the ability to do that. Um, that so, 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 I heard you think, uh, Yeah, well, and it's like I said, this is something that's not even up. It was just kind of added in just while we we're talking about it. So uh, I, you know, let's just. Let's just let's just not go that direction right now. We can bring that up. Like We're not going to do the grandparent grandkids. So, so what, what, are, wait, wait. what you can get around that is a custodial grandparent who has. We I know people who are raising their grandkids. Oh yeah. And I think that having a custodial, they're hundred percent responsible for mm -hmm. that child right. would right. bear uh, something that you should consider. So it's not just the unmarried children, but I think if somebody has full responsibility, that should fall under the same yeah. thing. Well, yeah. Safety yeah. living in the house. So. Yeah. Well, and then it would yeah. actually. Yeah. 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 It's qualified. In the house. Yeah. 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 It's it was qualified. Here's a simple yeah. have family uh, uh, guest price. So our mm -hmm. you know, whatever our, our, our guest rate Are is sixty free? bucks. And family prices, 30 bucks. Yeah, and that's something we can discuss. Age, with. age related. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, that, Connie, David, Jim, David Connie would like, like to speak. speak. Connie, Connie would like to speak. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Connie. So, uh, based on what you published as what you were going to consider as a child under 21, my comment is it needs to say a full time student. And no. a full time student could be 23 or 24. So I don't know where the 20. No, no, no. But, no, but normally, yeah. normally it's under, it's like, un, it's normal conditions that I've seen in other clubs have been 24 and under full time student, not just somebody who's working at Taco Bell and living with mom and dad. That's the first comment. That I, the, second, the second comment that I have is, the person, if you're going to allow children or adult, young adults or whatever to play, they need to be residents of the household. And if there's an issue with grandchildren, then have a, then you can always implement a child's rate, a, you know, a family child's rate mm -hmm. that could be less to, 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 to speak to Dave's issue with his grandchildren. But just to, just to say all grandkids, kids get a play for free, you could have somebody that lives there, that lives in um, LA and they could come every weekend and play for free. That's not, that's, 
you know, so good, my, my suggestion would be that if you want to do something around grandchildren playing that you mm -hmm. could have a, that do not live in the household, that you Correct. could have no. a, a, yeah. a family child rate. So. Yes. Right. Yes. And the ones that are actually living in the household are entitled to, um, to play oh, anyway. Yeah. So up hey, till, Jim. right now, up till up, up 18 or, or younger right now, the way it's written. So we're, we're just changing it to 21. Wouldn't that be a yeah. those family yeah. Rates? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're not doing, we're not determining that. Yeah, yeah. We're, just determining, yeah. we're just determining the age factor right, right. now. Exactly, but it, it's gone. Yeah, it, yeah, it always does. Um, it always comes. We, we were allowed to pay for our children's health insurance up until age 26. So I think my Connie yeah. said very valid point. Yeah. No, we're not. About the age of 24, is there a full time? Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Oh, the bachelors, they would like to. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I wanted to say I agree with Rick and um, Connie in that maybe a family rate, because it's not only like grandchildren, but it could be a son in law or a daughter in law or whatever. Oh. If you keep extending, mm -hmm. you know, having grandkids come every weekend or whatever. Um, some grandkids probably would, I mean, you just, I think you have to have a limit on it and, and maybe just a family rate would be good. Yeah, I, I, I like the family rate myself. I think it's fair well, and it's, Jim, it fits in that position better. Jim, yes. Uh, to everybody's point, to Connie's point, and it's a really good point as far as local uh, people would be able to take mm -hmm. advantage of having the grandkids out there all the time. And I do understand that. We actually do have a, a cost savings mechanism in place. And I was not smart enough to learn it five or six or seven years ago, but I did this year. So those juniors under 18 are paying half of a guest rate. Now we raised our guest rates to 85 bucks. So it was still brutal, you know, it was still 40, 45 bucks around. Um, but I guess there is something in there, but yeah, I, I, Connie's point was well taken, and I, and I think that uh, we just need to have a rate for, for uh, those family members. But we need to define the family members because this board is, uh, you know, I've we kicked this around a little bit, and the problem with being a, a winter destination. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, brother and sister-in-laws come down, and and aunts and uncles, and and you know, 40 year old children, and and they don't need a discounted rate. They need just the family, you know, uh, probably our guest rate. If our yes. guest rate was straight yeah. down, and then children would be that family rate. We're not trying to turn that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. Okay, so um, it sounds to me like everybody's pretty much on board with the 21, yes. um, at least, as a yes. minimum change. Yes, uh, maybe. Um, I, I have to agree with her. I think in the state of California and, and lawyer people that are up there, um, I believe the state of California recognizes <laughs> unmarried children under the age of 26. Well, yeah, but we're, we, 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 don't have to follow that. No, no, I know, but I'm just, oh, yeah, okay. I'm just, well, no, they, they go as high as we, yeah, 20, yeah. 24, 26, yeah. so we're, years, we're still living at home. They are like somebody's child said, student. Yeah, um, those are the professional students. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are the ones that we do the show. Never right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're 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 looking okay on that. Mr. Nelson, move on. Okay. Oh, now Mr. Nelson, Kim. Uh, 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 Tony Preston. Yeah. Um, um, oh, Tony. Yes. <laughs> Uh, don't forget when you make this change to 21, it needs to say full time student. Don't overlook that. It's not 21 living in the household working at Taco Bell. No, no, no. no if we're doing 21 and living in the house. Don't have to be a student. Don't say nothing about it, students. It well, should say student. Well, 
Well, it. Let's go. Let's move on to the next. Uh, oh, sorry. She wasn't going to speak. Uh, Connor, I, uh, please. Please. We can't hear. Oh, well, because. Okay, never mind. We're, okay. Um, this is probably what most of the people are here for. And that is the, um, the non resident player's card or a resident player's card. Um, for golf only. It's, it's only for golf. Um, it's going to be as I as I hand out it's at the discretion open play days are at the discretion always of the general manager and the head professional and or the course superintendent we can have a major frost or we have a major rain that closes the course they're the actual the ones that are going to determine whether or not we're playing golf that day or not and we have to follow uh, what they're what their recommendations are. Um, basically, anybody who plays um, on our golf course will have proper golf course etiquette, and um, and we do require uh, people to follow our, our our rules and regulations, which they'll be they'll be given uh, the rules and regulations so they understand. Um, in the case of a non-resident card. These are people who basically can be from Belgium and come here and buy one if they want. Um, you don't have to live in close, in close proximity. If you live in Orange County, you want to come out and do that or whatever, um, so be it. it. It also is set up pretty well for people next door uh, if they wanted to purchase a card. And, um, and then we also would require a trail fee if they're going to use a private cart. If not, then they will be billed the cart fee each and every time they go out to play. They do not have a private card. Um, we have not determined pricing or anything. This is just at the beginning stages. And it's um, we're looking to see if this is something that would be even feasible. Um, the other thing with um, this would also be um, we would allow proration as a new purchaser. But if once you buy a card, that's it. You come back the next year, um, you have people that would actually take advantage and just buy the card for six months, and and then not and then get get prorated off of that, and then come back and do it the next six months. So in order to keep that loophole from happening, we would have a non-proration. Um, it would just be a one-time, uh, and then um, no refunds. And uh, you can you can read it the way it was written there. Uh, it's just the start of something we can add to it. Uh, board members, what uh, what are your views? I think you might want to mention the limit that you guys. Were oh, um, yeah, and then there again, there is a limitation on the amount of these. We we're not looking to load this place up with five hundred outside golfers. Um, initially, we're looking at twenty five, and see how it goes. Um, we also are not going to be giving these things away. So if they're, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not going to be cheap. We had to pay a pretty penny to be able to be members here. And to uh, and, and we pay quite a bit every month. So we're not going to be giving that away. So um, I, not yet, Rick. Uh, we're doing board stuff. So. Okay. Uh, does anybody have anything to chime in on? Yep. I don't have a problem with it as long as I know it's one thing the board has been discussing extensively, and that's price. Because I just feel that it's only fair for all of us who pay an annual fee and a lot of money to live here, plus our homes, that if you're going to come here and play, I don't have a problem with that, but you're going to pay because if you don't have a little skin in the game, you're not going to care as much so um i just uh, i don't have a problem with it as long as it's uh price right right and so again uh i think price is the main factor and i would like david goldstein and um, eric's input on on what they feel it should be priced um because they are the professional <laughs> yeah what i'd like to back up 
and give uh, people attending today a little bit of an idea of the background on why we brought this topic up and what, are, what the motivations are. And it's really two pronged. I mean, obviously, you know, from a budgetary standpoint, um, you know, we, we can use the money, obviously, it, it'll help the bottom line, but we got a bigger problem than that. And we've got people that have been defrauding you as a member consistently for years and they've yeah. been getting away with it. And some of these people are costing you and I upwards of 20 or $30,000 worth of lost opportunity in golf fees a year. And uh, it's got to end. And, and the board would like to find uh, kind of a win-win, a win for the, uh, the people that would like to have their friends here, but they don't <laughs> want to put them on their deed. And uh, the board could get a win by maybe twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of income a year that we don't have to pass, uh, don't have to collect from the membership in in uh, HOA heights. So it's kind of a two pronged issue that we're trying to address: <laughs> defrauding of the membership and uh, maybe raising some funds. Dave, you just mentioned something about. Putting someone on your D, you want to explain that? Uh, as it stands right now, probably the most common way that, that you have been defrauded as a member of this club or an owner, I should say, uh, would be uh, it's been a practice to, uh, we, in our bylaws, we're allowed to, to have two golfing members on our D. And if you're a single person and you have a friend that you trust and want to put on your deed, although it is not recommend, r recommended and it's, and it's highly risky, um, but you could put them on your deed and you're in full compliance. And I don't think there's one member of the board that has any kind of issues with that. And I don't think the members do either. And that's full compliance. But what, how you've been defrauded is uh, people have gone down with their friend. They've, they've gone to the county courthouse. They've done a quick claim deed. They put this person on their deed. Before they even leave the courthouse, they have pulled them back off the deed, but they have a, a piece of paper uh, from the previous action that they get to bring back to the club. And that person is on the member roll until we either A, catch it or B, don't catch it. How do you catch something like that? Those people should be suspended. Yeah. Right, now, right now, we have no teeth. There should be a massive fine. Uh, and, and we absolutely have to be diligent uh, in our audits. I mean, we in, in most states, in, in the state I'm in right now, I can get on my computer and I can find out who the legal owner is of any property. I don't know about California. I can't say that. But I believe we have, been, uh, uh, we have had our employees uh, audit the, the county records to find out if people are in compliance and we found problems. Yeah. Yeah. It's happened a lot more than you think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, anyways, as far as, uh, as far as the board's concerned, um, uh, the non-player, and then we also have a, a resident player. And the resident player, the thought there would be to offer something out to at a at a lesser cost. Because you're already, this would be something that a member would purchase, uh, and then be able to uh, offer to uh, a friend or a family member, uh, or if you have a rental property, you could offer it to your tenant, um, because you actually are purchasing this as a resident. Um, you're already paying five thousand dollars a year for for fees, so we would we would look at a lesser cost on that and able to uh, have uh, that happen as well. So, uh, but there again, we haven't really discussed anything with, with finances. It would just be something that would be a little bit cheaper for uh, our residents to be able to say you, um, uh, say I'm a single guy and I'm, I got a gal that likes to play golf and uh, I don't want to put her on her ID. 
because I, I have a trust and I may not want to uh, include that person. But um, but I spend a lot of time with her and she loves to golf. And so if I had an opportunity to be able to, to purchase something like that, um, I would be able to, to accommodate that. Plus, uh, I'm already paying 5000 So I'm paying for the two, even though I'm using one. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have quite a few members that are in that boat. Um, so it would be nice to offer that, I think. Uh, but you're not overstressing or overtaxing the course because back maybe when that person had the spouse that maybe had passed away or whatever, they were both using it. So it's not like that's changed. Right. So these are things that we're looking at to try to help uh, members that, uh, you know, that have that situation. And, uh, you know, it makes it tough because you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, it's hard to want to put somebody on a D, you know, and it's not, you know, you got, you got to trust them fully. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, you don't take that lightly. So uh, anyways, these are, these are the, these are things that we, we've been talking about. So uh, any of the uh, board members want to chime in on the uh, resume card and all, and then we can open it up to the members. So again, I'm good with both of these proposals. I'm in favor of them, but I would like to get Eric and David's input on pricing. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think your in, input is imperative. Uh, if you go ahead and do this. Uh, both of you, David. Yeah. And well, well, I think it's imperative for everybody that's going to vote on it as well. They want to know what's going to be exactly. Yeah. Provided. And you and haven't decided. decided. Right. Yeah. We haven't decided a number. We haven't yet. decided pricing or anything. And I Why don't we do that at some of the courses below us. You know, down in uh, Palm Desert and those places, they they do that. They do this. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and open up the questions. No, to, uh, I, I have one more. Uh, yeah, yeah, you. Oh, oh, all right. Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I just back to the point. It opening up. For member discussion is critical because this whole idea is for the membership it really is the members are going to have to decide if this is what they want and so uh, we're just trying to be creative and come up with some ideas and see what the members want if the members don't want it it's going to go down so yeah so um i have one more thing that eric just reminded me of um on the resident player card the way that's going to work is you're only allowed to sell one of your spots for your lot, right? You can't sell both, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So if you own a property, you can't sell them both. Um, you have to keep one for yourself and then you can sell one to your buddy awesome. or your girlfriend or whatever. What, what, if you, what if you had multiple properties in your, uh, and you had tenants? Then you can sell one on each property. Mm -hmm. Correct. That would be the way we should do it. Yep. Why not? I would also like to hear from input from from the audience on whether you would want to allow um, WGA and MGA membership for people with the players card. No. We certainly, you know, I I understand the member side of that saying that's a member privilege to be a member of the men's club or the women's club. Yeah. But our numbers in the clubs are very poor, and and I would really like to see more tournament participation and more club participation. So I, I understand there's an argument on either side. And frankly, I haven't decided myself which way to go on that. That's that's I just wanted to put that out there for you guys. Okay. Uh, there's somebody Gary. Um we have a, a Sue Moore has been or catch him, I mean, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Type on Sue. Sue. First I'm gonna kind of comment on what Steve just brought in. I think one of the things that needs to do is go back to the MGA and WGA and get a feel for them. But one of the things, I know you haven't flushed out these programs yet, but one of the things I would like to see on the non-resident mm -hmm. is that they cannot make tea times. They can only make tea times after the tea sheet has been full. Yeah, it's, so, we, were, so we were talking about three time. days versus yeah. So less than seven Good. days, a non-resident can get a tea time. Correct. If a, if a member didn't ask for it before that, too bad. Yeah. Exactly. Gary, Gary was yeah. before you actually. Uh, would this non-resident player card have to be voted on by the membership? 
everything we're talking about here has to be voted. So we've done it at least three times and it's been vehemently voted down every time. Well, it's yeah. I, I was told last time it failed by 19 votes. Correct. So I wouldn't say vehemently put down. <laughs> well, uh, first shall we get it? First time from 2007, it was just nine. They they 10 percent voted in favor of it. So maybe it change. I'm all for it. I'm not against it, but it's something that's got to be presented to the to the membership in a, in a way that they'll understand it. Right. And, and they right. vote, vote yes on it. It's always been voted down. Well, mainly, Gary, what we're looking to do is just see if there's any anybody that, you know, I mean, if we have some good support behind it, then this is what we'd like to do is then go ahead and tweak it and make it right so it fits into, you know, what we're looking to try to achieve. Um, Shelly Daly was... Yeah, the only concern I have is that you brought it up, Steve, is about the WGA. Currently, you have to be a member of Mission Lakes Country Club, a member in good standing. So that limits that. <laughs> However, it does not mean our bylaws and rules and regs can be changed. So that is a possibility to help build the membership, but it's something that would have Brought up by the members of the and, and if you read um, one of the requirements to be any of these cardholders, the reason I'm saying a member in good standing is, is because you could actually be suspended and then have your buddy buy you a card, and now you're all of a sudden playing golf again. That's why you have to be a member of good standing. So, yep. um, uh, 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 Wendy. <laughs> I, I, I kind of concur with, with uh, Susan, and, and I think the reason that we only got 19, we were shy 19 votes in the past, is my opinion only, is that there was no skin in the game. We were giving those away practically for free, and that was why, I mean, no, it wasn't free, I said practically free. When you consider what we have at stake here yeah. in this country club, we're practically giving them away for free. If, they're, if they have skin in the game, We'd be for it, and that was we were on that line before. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're skin and if they have skin involved in the game, then we would be for it. Rick Ketchum. So, okay, so a couple things. The, on the the resident players card, I don't quite get that. If it's your girlfriend and she doesn't live here, then she's a non-resident card. That's you know, that, that's you're right. you're buying it though as a member. It doesn't matter. You're, the well, person using it as a non-resident. So I understand. Now, for the a rent or somebody who owns a property and wants to uh, allow you know one of their people to to play golf, then certainly a a renter's card or a renter's player's card, you know, some wording whatever for that mm -hmm. would make more sense. So, so Rick, it doesn't have anything to do with where the person lives that's getting the card. Okay, it's it's question. the person that owns the property. Okay. So the resident card you would purchase as the resident and then you could sell it to I don't care where they live. Okay. It doesn't matter. No, I, 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 I would disagree with that. No, what okay. I would say okay. okay. A couple other things. Oh, okay. You said go to you know go to the um, the proration. Whatever. Then why not sell a six month card too? Yeah. Right. No. Well, I'm, I'm just saying why not? You're going to have people that are snowbirds that maybe they stay you know in, in you, but they they love the course and they want to play. And yeah. I'm just saying you're, you're missing an opportunity. You're missing an opportunity for more to generate more income. And then lastly, to uh, 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 David's point. About the, the fraud and, and what the, the, how it works is you in our in our CCRs you have to have a proof of twenty five percent ownership of the property. You have you can only change the person on your deed once every twenty four months. Okay, and the easy way to to fix what you were talking about, Jimothy, or what Dave was talking about with people going in, then they file two documents at once. Is and, and this, this you can get the service like 50 bucks a month to check on we bought it. ownership, but <laughs> we already have it, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. and we're going to be pursuing it. But if you get a grant deed and a grant deed costs 400 bucks, somebody's not going to file a, a if you require a grant deed, they're not going to go you know drop 400 bucks so they can take the person off, you know, 
five minutes later. With the, with the we actually do. Uh, we do require a grant deed when we um, when you register here. Yeah. That has to have the red stamp on it. Otherwise, it's not. So you can't consider. use a quick claim to put somebody on and then take them right off. And, and use no, that they, they have to bring a grant to get right, right. in order to have them on there. Yeah. So that's what we require. And then, and then lastly, you know, we have a list of people who are not allowed to circumvent the circuit at, at the pro shop. Somebody walks in and says, oh, you know, they're, they're, that, you will, at the, there was a, a, a situation years ago where we had but That's a member who had yeah. not played, paid his uh, dues for years yeah. and let his house go and then jumped on somebody else's title and played for free when he owed us 10 grand. Somebody like that should be allowed to play. That's a little bit of a violation of privacy. I have an issue with that as far as the private show. I can say that I'm going to ask them to release a club for this one. Give me a list. Yes, but they should have to. That's they're an employee and you know, all sorts of stuff is gonna come up. You know how verbal people are inappropriate. Karen, you're you're absolutely right. Thank and you, and uh, uh, there are some privacy issues involved with that. And we've kind of looked into that too, Rick, but uh, it doesn't look like that's gonna fly. Okay, so just to let you know. But uh, we're we're trying to circumvent the 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 fraud that's been going on and and this is one way with the residence card that that may circumvent this may not but we're trying to okay so that's the, that's part of the reason for this residence card okay um i've got somebody on the screen and then i i'll hit you uh jane, 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 jane. jane. yeah and then uh, ron parks has been in the back with his Jim, can you uh, yeah. Yes, I would like to to offer an alternative to a residence card, and I've had it brought up by people that uh, rented seasonally or um, long term. Is how about if we sell a discounted ten round package and just let them pay five hundred, six hundred dollars for ten rounds and let it go at that and that's it. Yeah. We actually do that now. Um, I had a question about the non-resident card versus the resident card. Are they basically going to be the same price? No. Oh, okay, so, so how are you going to you have an idea of what you're going to know? Yeah, basically the non-resident card and that's something that Eric and um, and David and then uh, they'll probably bring it to the board and we'll discuss it. Because okay. I mean, this stuff does affect me 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a boyfriend who's I've been with for four years and he he likes to play golf, but I can't pay $85 every no. time he plays. Yeah. Right. So what the what the, what the what the bottom line is that we're trying to I mean, I'm already paying. put something out there that's going to be economical for for that particular situation the non-players card um their non-resident card there's a difference here because the resident card is for it's actually somebody who is a member of mission lakes purchasing the card you're purchasing the card for either either a friend or a family member typically if you do have a a rental it does offer that option as well um, since you've invested into our community, in a lot of cases, you know, there are people that have uh, homes and have a rental property as well. Right. So it would it would give them the ability to be able to, uh, you know, offer that out where they wouldn't normally be able right. to. But I mean, you're, you're planning on having that be a little bit less than the non resident. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, so kind of, yeah, uh, but considerably. Okay. We're going to give you a family discount. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Ron Park. Um, hey, Jim. Can you hear me? So yeah, hang on. Uh, Ron Parks is, is up right now. And then okay. you're next, Eddie. All right. As somebody who has two rentals in here and a lot, um, I personally wouldn't want my renters 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I don't think they have to really buy into the situation. And these are my rent. I mean, then you don't have to buy a car. Yeah, you, you, have you, would, you don't have to buy a car. But let's just say, let's just say there is somebody with a with a with a golf cart. Right. But I have no control about you giving the cars to somebody or you giving the cars to somebody. That's true. I'm going to have to play with. Well, I'm just saying is you wouldn't want to be playing with the people or having to deal with the people that I registered. <laughs> <laughs> then why are you registering? I know it sounds a little bit I scary. Can I do yeah. something else? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the laws are very much in the renter's favor, yeah. and you can't get rid of them. I can. COVID? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> opening up a can of worms that you really would not want to see. What about yeah, outside the plant? Uh, what about outside the plant? Okay. Are they in the plant? That's something you can do. The same thing here. The rats will be in the plant. You know, I can buy a can. Okay. I'm just saying, All right. be careful what you ask for because you might save a little bit of money. But you might be opening up a can of worms that you don't want to do. Um, um, and, all right. And, and some of you right now has lost a lot because of rule change. Because now, <coughs> under my LLC, I had six or oh, four golf rights that now I have none. And uh, and I'm paying for four, you know, paying on two properties with no golf rights. So, um, so that's it. All right, Eddie. Okay, thanks. So a couple of things on this non-resident agreement. When we went out to the membership last, which I think was 2018, we did lose that vote by 19 votes. And one of the reasons we lost that was that in that agreement, we included swimming pool, tennis, the restaurant, all the amenities for the club. I think if that is tweaked down to include golf only, that that would pass uh, mm -hmm. with the members. We and I want to ask also if you're using the agreement that we had because it was um, well, well thought out, legally reviewed. Uh, it needs some amendments, but it gives a legal document that you can you can use for the membership to see what the wording is, and if it includes just golf. And there is skin in the game because back then. I think our agreement was $1,000 initiation and $5,000 a year. Uh, now they could opt out, but there were some conditions for that as well. And I would encourage the membership when if this comes before them to pass that because it is a revenue stream that can help our club and not impact our golf course. So that's my thoughts for that. Uh, and, and Eddie, we do actually have it as uh, golf only. Um, uh, we wouldn't be offering anything but golf. Are you using that agreement that was in place and just tweak it? Uh, we we have uh, bits and pieces of it uh, that Wayne is Wayne would be putting together the actual verbiage of this, so it would it would actually uh, be something somewhat similar. We're trying to make it a little bit more simple and streamlined. Um, and, uh, and so that's kind of what we're, we're trying to do with the thing. But, uh, it was the legalese that caused that agreement to be as lengthy as it was. If we can reduce that and yeah. Wayne can all the better, but the members do have to have something they can look at, hold in their hands and understand rather right. than we're going to charge five grand. It's going to be this. Right. Okay. Um, Jack. Yeah, hi guys. I, I just want to say that I support the idea, the concept. Um, you clarified the wording is, this is the starting block wording. The wording is definitely not enough words. Um, similar to what Eddie said, there's a bit of legal ease that needs to be in there. But right. the main clarification is that resident idea of buying one card sure. and that a non-resident has a little more wording behind when they can play, when they can do tee times, that kind of stuff's obvious. But the concept is good. Um, I think 
I kind of agree with last time the wording, not the legalese, but some of the wording on how many people, how it could be added to needs to be thought of. Um, I don't think it should just be open now that it's okay. And let's say we do 25 people that tomorrow the board's a 50 people, 75, 100. It needs to stop somewhere. So, Correct. Yeah, you know, mainly we're looking to see the success of the, of the program. Oh, and one other thing. This doesn't take away the 10 round card from the public or anyone else? So. No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the real bottom, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I think the real bottom line to this is going to be what you decide to charge. Because as I think it was Wendy said, you know, people before thought it was a very close vote, but it was nobody had the skin, their skin in the game. And if you don't put it out there with enough price, and as Ron Park said, you might get lower level people playing on the course. So if you price it so that the people that want to buy in will be the appropriate members to our club. But but that's really the bottom line is going to be people will vote on it based on how much they think that they that the club will make in revenue. Right. And, and the other thing is, is that when we price it, you know, it's going to sound a little high probably to a lot of folks but when you think about it if you're coming in here and you have unlimited golf that means you can play uh, virtually almost every day our weather's so good here um <laughs> uh, except for october and um well you know the winds are a little bit to deal with but but really when you look at it um you know you you could well, like steve extran plays like 900 rounds a year yeah. but um and the wind is good for your team play handicap <laughs> but 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 I'm, I'm looking at like a neighbor next door say coming in here um <laughs> say you got somebody who's retired and they can play five rounds of golf per, per week without even thinking about it um you know that really brings the cost per round down that's well that's that's right that's that that's my point from if you charge five thousand dollars and somebody plays five times a week that's twenty dollars a round correct so, and, but, and that's where they're gonna they're gonna come up with their idea of where the value is so if you know if, if that's the case you know well if we if we price it somewhere in the you know the, the five to six thousand dollar range then that would be uh something that would be probably close, I would imagine. Um, it would bring in a decent amount of revenue, plus there'd be a trail fee on top or cart fee. So figure the cart fee is 20 bucks if you don't have a cart, otherwise you're gonna have to pay the trail fee. And we could make the trail fee more like an $800 cost instead of a $600 cost. So, you know, we have that ability to do that as well. So a lot of different ideas as far as pricing is concerned, but. Um, we do we do not want to give that card away. But that but that might help sell the program to the to our members when we vote. Oh, most well, definitely. I think so. Okay. Um, anyways, so those are those are basically the uh, things in a nutshell right now that we're talking about. Um, anybody else want to? Uh, yeah. Right. Um, I just had a question. Um, I know that it's a golf only. Are you going to offer perhaps because I know there are people who are at Mount View. It's much easier to come here for an exercise class. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you going to offer something like that? No, no. No. Nobody is after the nobody's going on that. No. Yeah. 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 Can you can use the uh, restaurant downstairs, right? Yeah. 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 Anybody, 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 anything, that's, 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 anything that's open to the public yeah. is is, is, is fine. Okay. Where know. where we have to draw the line is is that you, you know you can have um, uh, you know if we're trying to limit it to golf mainly because these are people that want to come over and use the golf course and they'll subsequently hopefully come up and use a sandwich or a restaurant, have a beer. But um, uh, we do have a Gentlemen over here. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm a, hi. Hi, it's Mike. I'm a, a new member. I just uh, bought in this month. So. Oh, Thanks. great. Yeah. Welcome. And and a question on the resident card is that would that be just for people that only have one person on a deed? So if you already have two people on your deed, 
would you still be able to buy you know a resident card for a family member or somebody it would be a non-golfer if you say um in, in for instance behind me over here he's got so in my, in my case um my wife doesn't play golf okay so as long as only one person is playing golf in the residence <laughs> you can sell the other one but you can only have two people on the property using the golf Using the no matter card. how you do it, resident card or or deed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Kathy. Okay. Just only my opinion. I think since we're allowing this uh, card thing, I think it's a good idea that we're allowing them to join to the WJ and the Women's Club for that. I, oh. I agree. Because yeah. we, we have a lacking. I don't think here's the problem. Good. The Men's Club is getting smaller and smaller as we speak um you know uh, we we need we need members and we're not getting you know uh, new members but that's up to the that's up to the the, the mga and the wga to decide but um you know uh it's it's nice to be able to have possibly some new members coming in jim just just one second because i i just want to point out with with the one you have one golfer and you, if you were to sell a residence card for your other golf slot would his wife lose privileges for other things no no okay. just want to clarify that thank you <laughs> now as far as the golf tournaments go i understand that the men's golf and the women's golf they don't want that part of it but what about the open club member tournaments like 4th of July. Yeah, yeah, they would. They, they could play. Oh, well, if they're, if they're a member of the. As long yeah. as they have, they, that there's certain tournaments that are just uh, strictly MLCC. We, we, would, we would have to determine if they're considered a member, and that would be something that we would have on our verbiage. That's what um, Jack and uh, Eddie were talking about. We need to we need to actually include that or preclude that from the. Yes. Proposal. I mean, that's part of the fun, you know, if there's a Valentine's Day, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. I, I, play. It's going to, it just depends. I mean, like I said, you know, we have members, members that are passing away and then we're not replacing them. So right. we need, we need more, more uh, members, sadly. Oh, we have a member on Zoom. Jack, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm not muted. Right. No problem. I just, I, um, I just wanted to get an idea on what your ETA is for getting re the real wording or next steps wording so we can actually opine on paper with words in front of us. Well, yeah. well we, would, we would like to be able to get these uh, proposals put together as soon as possible. And um, we have to post them for 28 days, uh, I believe. And we do have to put this out uh for a vote um which would require a ballot um so uh you know it does take a little bit of time so we need to get this stuff over to um if you know over to to legal and have them look at it and make sure everything's uh the way it should be and and we need to um uh, add in any input as well okay um, uh, then i would suggest uh that we shoot for opening day that gives you that gives you a bogey to reach towards. Clo course is closed in October anyway, so August September is kind of. Well, we're going to try to do it quicker now. We're actually going to try to get ballots out if we can, uh, October, so that we can actually implement this by November first. Okay, so, my only caution would be then that it's hard to get the everyone's comments and wording together in a small amount. <laughs> if you guys can do it, that's okay. Yeah, it's hard to get anything done quickly around here. No, um, that's yeah, been proven. That's why I was. Shooting. That's why I was shooting for next season. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? We're going to be talking about the, the wording, and we're going to have the attorney expense. We're going to have to do a, a fill the, the vote out there. It's about twelve hundred bucks. How about we use our little constant contact and send out a quick survey? Here's what we're considering. What do you think? See how it comes back from the membership. Then you know if you should proceed or not. <laughs> but you don't have all the details yet. So, uh, well, if you have enough details to share with them, this is 
This is what we're proposing as of today. This is what we're considering. You could go up with your numbers for pricing and whatnot. Send a, send a survey out, see how your members react. Find out what they like and what they don't like. You might have to tweak the get them out. Yeah. Well, here's one of the problems too, and that is we have to have 429 votes back. Exactly. So it's 428 plus one. So that's where a quorum comes in. If if we do not have that, then none of this stuff is going to pass. So whether or not it's voted for or against, we have to have at least. 429 voters, voting residences that come back, um, not individuals. So um, where we have a small group of people here right now and uh, a group of people up on, uh, uh, you know, on Zoom. Um, you know, I, I think most everybody here was sounded pretty positive about every single one of these things with a little bit of tweaking here and there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean that's what it's really going to count. See what, see how many we actually get. Yeah, uh, that are going to vote. So um, I don't have a problem sending out anything uh, just as easily as we can um, uh, request people to. Uh, I mean, I have no problem with emailing, uh, emailing back uh, or or give me a call or or any of the board members. Yeah, and 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 discuss with some of your other. Uh, uh, friends and, and find out what's going on. Uh, see what they see what they think. Sue, I just have a question that came up. Okay, we're thinking about the twenty five for the non residents, right? Are you guys going to go out and market, or or do they just fall out of the air? We would be marketing it. How? We would well, same way you would anything. We would market first of all. We want to market to the people close by. You can also market. Uh, we could put it in the local Desert Sun newspaper as well. No, we can, as we an ad. Yeah, it's the direct mail. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, it would be nice to be able to market more than just that, like market the sand wedge and the restaurant at the same time. Um, you know, get people to come in here, uh, see what we're about. And it's just that we there. have to do marketing. So that's all. Well, play. that is, that, well, we actually. Before we, be, right when this board started, we actually had a marketing uh, person that came in, and uh, and then we, we kind of got off the off it a little bit because we were dealing with our Jonas system, and uh, he's he's a little wise to that as far as how to work with it. So we do have a marketing guy that we will be working with, uh, Michael Burke with Burke Productions, and so uh, he is going to come in and start. Working with us on that. I still have all the EDM stuff. Okay. Well, anything that we can we can pass to Eric to help with any kind of program would be nice. But um, but I, I think that it sounds sounds like people are pretty positive with most of everything here. Is there anybody that has any negative? Um, uh, I mean, just absolutely this ridiculous. We shouldn't do this. Is there anybody yeah. that has any feeling towards any of that, that no. we discussed today? No. So, so it sounds like we're we're at least going in the right direction. So, um, anyways, uh, with that being said, um, we'll go ahead and uh, adjourn the meeting. Oh, thank, you, thank you, thank you, I just want to make one quick comment that has absolutely nothing to do with our town hall today, but there's going to be a Desert Water Agency District One election for the first time. We're going to have a representative for. Well, we're pretty much the largest community within that district one in the Mission Lakes for the water district. And we have a candidate, uh, a new member, Dr. Steve Bron Bronak. He has, he's a PhD in data analysis. He's a full-time professor at Cal State San Bernardino, both the doctoral studies program and the undergraduate program. So he submitted <laughs> his application for candidacy today. I think Shelby Daly is going to be helping us as campaign manager. Uh, he's got backing of a lot of our core members. He's a really great, young, energetic, very smart, very educated guy. Before I was going to endorse him, I, I went and looked into his background, and he's extraordinary. And the guy he's running against is really kind of scary. And, and so we need Steve Bronak. 
Yeah. He's a new member. He's here. a new member. He's wonderful. Um, and, and he's really excited about this and he's digging into it hard. And like I say, he submitted his candidacy papers today. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Okay. Okay.